today we are having uh, the greatest interview with uh, two people, or uh, two of my great friends here in our studios today. And as we know, uh, as we always bring these kind of interviews, they are always they are supposed to be impacting uh, some of the uh, some information in our lives or day-to-day -day routines. Uh, my name is uh, Captain Hadid Hejuni, and today I'm visited with uh, two guests in, in studio, a great lady here and another um, gentleman here. Before we get uh, to them, uh, this is uh, Sky FM, uh, or uh, Sky 106.1 FM uh, YouTube uh, channel in partnership with uh, KDR uh, TV. Uh, and as I said, my name is Captain Hadidi Jr. I'll be taking you through an interview on uh, sickle cell. We all know we might be living with uh, people with sickle cell disease. We might have interacted with some of them, but maybe we don't know how to treat them or how to interact with them. I'm here with uh, two of them here and uh, they'll be giving us their story and uh, more of how they have been interacting with people and uh, how so far uh, this disease has affected uh, their lives if any of, or if in any case uh, they are affected. Uh, welcome. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, today as we as I said I have two guests in studio and uh, uh, one of them, I'll give them time to introduce themselves and uh, I'll start with uh, my uh, closest right hand. Right. My name is Seto Tieno Wadenya. Yeah. Uh, I am 28 years old and uh, I am a warrior of six disease. And thank you so much. If you could just uh, pass the mic to uh, my good friend. Uh, Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michelle Omulo. Um, I'm, I'm a 29 years old. I have sickle cell disease, and I'm a filmmaker by profession, and also a sickle cell advocate. Thank you so much. Uh, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm uh, here with uh, Seth and uh, uh, Michelle. Uh, Michelle and Seth are warriors of uh, this uh, disease, uh, sickle cell uh, disease. We all know, uh, as I said earlier, we might not know how to interact with uh, these kind of people, uh, but now, uh, today, this interview is just to impact knowledge on you, or uh, is just to give you more on how uh, to interact with them. Whenever you see them, you don't run away, because we've seen in many cases we fear or to know our persona. But now, after this interview, I hope everything will be okay. Uh, Seth, yes. you said uh, you are uh, 28 years old. At what point was uh, this disease diagnosed in you? Well, I was diagnosed with, uh, with sickle cell disease yeah. when I was uh, at the age of two years old. Eh? Two years? Yeah, by a doctor called Dr. Muga. Yeah. Unfortunately, she uh, is dead by right now. Yes. Sorry for that. So, just basically to mean if you are 28 right now and you are diagnosed uh, at the age of two, yeah. so you've been in this? with this disease for the past 26 years. That's right. Thank you so much. If you could just pass the mic to Michelle. Michelle, at what age was a sickle cell diagnosed in you? Okay, my mom saw my eyes starting to get yellow. Yeah. So she took me to Kenya International Hospital. Yeah. At the age of three, that is when I was diagnosed with sickle cell disease. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. And before you give back the mic, how was the disease affected you so, uh, so, far, so far in terms of uh, your progress? It has, it has affected me, especially when now the stroke came in, yeah. in 2010. Mm -hmm. It slowed down my movements yeah. and truly discouraged me a lot from uh, going for things that I wanted to do. Mm. I really felt so hopeless because yeah. I felt like, ah, uh, Maybe no one, no, one, no one is just ready to even listen to me. No one is able, is able to love me. No one is able, and no one cares. Yeah. That is what I felt. Yeah. And at some point, when I was in high school, yeah. I tried to commit suicide a number of times because I felt like, hey, why, why me? Why yeah. me? Why me? When all my friends were, were happy, 
they don't want to even associate with me. So you're like, um, did, did you do something wrong that could, to, could make them uh, not want to associate with you? Yeah. So I felt so bad. It really no. affected me a lot. You said uh, uh, at the age of, uh, uh, in 2010 is when uh, uh, the stroke, stroke hit. Uh, came. August. In August 2010. Yes. What age were you in that? Uh, I was yeah. uh, 17. 17 years. Yes. So you can say that the part of the stroke is the one that has affected your progress so far. So far. Uh, thank you. Uh, if you could pass the mic to Seth. Seth, how has sickle cell affected your progress so far? Okay, I can say that uh, sickle cell uh, have done it bad so far yeah. uh, because. Ever since I was diagnosed with this disease, yeah. I've not lived a, a peaceful life yeah. or a happy life. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, just recently, in 2019, yeah. uh, I was diagnosed with osteoarthritis of the hip. Yeah. Uh, that resulted from CC disease, SCD. Yeah. Then uh, it forced me to go for a total hip replacement surgery. Yeah. That was done in Kisumu Specialist Hospital. Yeah by a doctor called Dr. Tobias. So thereafter, I took another one year, yeah. uh, trying to, to get well, trying to heal. Mm. Then uh, last year now, yeah. I did another total hip replacement now for the left, uh, uh, rather left limb uh, yeah. at uh, Moi Teaching Referral Center, that is MTRS Yeah. And now I have the two metals in my Legs yeah. that are supporting me in terms of movement. Okay. Uh, then, apart from that, I can recall also back in the days, eh, yeah. uh, I had a memory lapse. Okay. Then I also lose my vision. Yes. It is something that uh, really hindered me a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I can say I've struggled with it. Yeah. Yeah. After this point that I've reached. Uh, thank you so much. If uh, ladies and gentlemen, I was supposed to be having a doctor here today, but unfortunately he was not able to make it to our studios today. But I promise that because of some of the terms that are being used here, you, we might not be able to understand them. That's the, the main reason why I was looking for a doctor who has not uh, been able to make it. But I promise in the next uh, episode of this uh, kind of interview, I'll have to look for a, a doctor to translate some of these things and uh, give us uh, a broader picture of what, uh, what, what they actually uh, go through in uh, uh, their day-to-day -day routine. You've talked about hip replacement and uh, this is, I think, uh, part of medication or uh, part of the things we get in hospitals for these kind of uh, results given uh, by the sickle cell disease. In terms of medic medication, what do you feel? Do you feel your medication or the effects you've been able to, or challenges you've been able to be experiencing so far in terms of medication? What are some of the challenges? Okay, I can say that uh, the challenges are there always, eh? mm -hmm. because even when I was going for total hip replacement, eh, yeah. uh, this uh, would incur a lot of in a cash, eh? yeah. and you see, my parents could not afford it. Mm -hmm. uh, in Kisumu Specialist, yeah. they needed 1.2 million. 1.2 million. 1 million eh? yeah. For one limb only. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you see, you find that raising that uh, kind of money yeah. was really hectic. Eh? Yeah. So uh, my mom uh, was caught up with stress until uh, she, uh, okay, she ended up being uh, uh, with uh, blood pressure yeah. and diabetes yeah. because of, of all the stress. Yeah. Now, when we went to NHIF, NHIF because sickle disease is not being covered by NHIF, eh? yeah. so uh, I took a deliberate action to go there and yeah. request them if they could at least cater for this treatment. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't lie that uh, they didn't give me any support. Eh? Yeah. What they could give me was uh, 350,000. Uh, from uh, NHIF. NHIF. Yeah. 
Now because now I have an HIF, I could only get that three fifty thousand. Yeah. Yeah. So you find that three fifty thousand cannot even pay the doctor's fee. Yeah. Yeah. Cannot even pay the anesthesia. Yeah. Yes. So uh, we went back and uh, it took uh, uh, quite a while before uh, I could go back again to the doctor. Yeah. So when I went back, I explained all this to him. Mm. Uh, fairly enough, he understood me. Mm. Then uh, he withdraw all his charges. Okay, yes. the doctor the now. The doctor now. Yeah. That Dr. Tobias, eh? Yes. Now, he told me that uh, I didn't need to pay him anything. Yeah. What I needed was to pay for the suit of yeah. and all the medication that I was going to receive there. Yeah. Yeah, because even that was not enough for his day. Yeah. So, in terms of medication also, yeah. I, I, I can uh, say that uh, it's a great challenge. Yeah. Because uh, for SCD patients, yeah. Eh, yeah. we need to take our remedies like every day. Thank you so much. Yeah. Michelle, uh, talking about uh, the medication uh, challenges, uh, you've said uh, you've said or uh, you've stayed with the disease for the longest uh, part of your life so far. What would, would you say there is uh, 26 years actually? Yes. Yeah. So would you say there is a challenge in receiving your treatment or medication so far? Yes, there is because uh, one thing about it, the government is not um, has not made any any strict measures to get and make sure our, our medication is, on, is in the pharmacy and is in the country, yeah. everywhere. Yeah, they haven't. Yeah. So you found out that uh, when you go to the pharmacy to look for your medicine, yeah. because I always buy mine f for the month, yeah. you find out that maybe there is, there is none, yeah. or it's expensive, yeah. you have to look for another alternative to go and buy the other the rest of the medicine. So I always buy my medicine from St. Luke Hospital yeah. because they are, they are the two sickle services patients. Yeah. And uh, Dr. Olo is the one that I started with my clinic for yeah. sickle services. Yeah. So you find out that when I don't get my medication anywhere in the pharmacies yeah. in Kisumu, I go there. And that is my last resort. Yeah. So when I don't find it, I know it's not there most of it. It's not there. And you've spoken or you've talked about uh, buying these drugs, yes. uh, finding very them expensive. is also very... On the cost, or on the part of uh, the cost the of cost, these drugs? It's almost 5,000 now. 5,000? Yes. And uh, how long would that take you? One month. One month? Yes. 5,000 shillings? Yes. And uh, I forgot to ask, what do you do for a living? I'm a filmmaker by profession. Mm. I started my own filmmaking uh, company. Yeah. Uh, I just started it last year, September, so we just went pole pole. And, and uh, has it started paying? No, really. The reason I'm asking that is on the, because of the cost of these drugs. Because yes. if you say uh, for a month or in a month you use 5,000 on drugs, mm -hmm. irrespective of order, uh, leaving out the some of the things that might come in between uh, the month. Uh, that is where my cousin, yeah. who lives abroad, comes in. Okay. She's from the UK. She's, uh, she always helps me in getting my drugs. She always yeah. asks me to go and uh, inquire mm -hmm. uh, the cost for my drugs. The, the, the whole of them, hydroxyurea, folic acid, yeah. PNV, and uh, paludrin yeah. from uh, St. Luke. Because now that is when well, uh, I get them every everything. I get everything there. Yeah. So after after inquiring from them, I, I I send her a text from on WhatsApp and she sends the money. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so she's you. been very helpful. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, I'm challenged because yes. you've uh, spoken about or you've talked about um, you being a filmmaker. Yes. And uh, there's a way you're pushing yourself uh, yes. towards the limit. Yes. We have. Uh, some of the things that people talk about on the issue of uh, sickle cell, as I said, uh, yes. maybe uh, the things of being uh, not knowing, yes. because there are some things that people might be talking about uh, sickle cell that you yes. that even scare you. Yes. 
Yes. What is one thing, or what is that one thing that you've heard people talk about uh, Siku Selende? You wonder, where is this one coming from, or has scared you? Okay, I faced, some, I, I faced a lot of discrimination in the industry, in the film industry in Kisumu. Yeah. I started in, it in Nairobi, and I saw it not being fruitful, mm. so I came back to Kisumu. Yeah. Kisumu, I dealt with a lot of challenges, a lot of production companies that yeah. were not so, you know, so quick to take me in because of my, 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 my weak right side. Yeah. So I felt a lot, a lot of discrimination. Yeah. So that's that is what it, that's what led to my starting my own production company okay. called Victoria Youth and Film Empowerment. Okay. So in terms of uh, people talking about because not knowing yeah. uh, what it is all about, yeah. they just you know they use the myths surrounding Sikosel and it's not true. Yeah. Not all the means are not true. Thank you. Yes. On uh, the part of some of the things that people say about sickle cell, that uh, when they get to you or when you hear them talk about, you get scared or uh, they scare you or at some point you wonder uh, what's going on with this disease. What is that one thing that you wonder, you've heard people talk about and then you wonder what's going on? Okay, number one thing, yeah is uh, discrimination, as Michelle have mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you find that uh, out there yeah. in the society, we, we're being termed as an addict, yeah. like a bad omen in the society. Mm. Uh, because, uh, okay, uh, at a point, I can call this a disease as a part of a disability. Mm. Yeah, because uh, you find, even if you go to an office, mm. maybe, you need to seek uh, maybe a chance for of internship or maybe uh, a job, perhaps. Mm. Eh? Mm. You find that uh, at the entrance, yeah. receptionist, uh, how he or she will handle you first of all yeah. will even uh, you. you. Yeah. Uh, okay, you, you find that. Uh, you're going there, you're being seen like uh, somebody who cannot. Okay. Okay. You step in, but already there were uh, an impression. Uh, yeah, yeah. That this one cannot do anything. Yeah. So even when you're taken to the boss himself or herself to go to and face yourself, right? Yeah. You find that yourself uh, being disqualified immediately. Uh, allow me uh, catch you a little bit uh, because uh, I'm told uh, we are having a short commercial break. Uh, before we uh, get back. But before we take the break, what we are going to talk about or uh, some of the things that you will be telling me after this break is we've talked, you've talked about uh, discrimination in job places, discrimination of uh, people you meet, uh, from people you meet. What is that one thing that someone you once had someone talk about and then it scared you? Because as you said, they are myths. What is that one myth that you feel has scared your life so far? Uh, before we answer that, just a short commercial break before we get back to uh, on the next uh, part of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back live on air with my two guests, as I said. I have two great people here, or I have the greatest friends of mine. And uh, so far, we've been talking about uh, sickle cell. They are uh, affected by sickle cell and uh, they live with uh, sickle cell. Uh, and they are not afraid to talk about uh, sickle cell. That's why uh, they are on this set. Uh, my name is uh, Captain Adede Jr. And as I was uh, talking, or, I was, uh, or I, what I was talking about, before we went on a short commercial break was on the effects or what was on the some of the challenges and some of the things that they've been hearing people talk about and then uh, they feel these things are not okay with us or they feel uh, scared by some of the things that uh, people talk about. Seth, I was talking to you before we went on a break. One of the things that you feel or one of the things that people say that has scared you so far, what is that one thing you can say? 
Okay. Uh, number one thing I can say that uh, okay, the there have been there many myths and misconceptions about the uh, SED. Yeah. Now, okay, I can say once I was told that uh, when I reach 18 years of age, yeah. I will be dead. And did that uh, scare you? I'm alive, you can see. And did it scare you at that point that uh, it was said? It, yeah, of course, yeah. it scared me a lot because I was living with fear. Yeah. I was living knowing that when I reach 18 years exactly of age, yeah. I'll be normal. Yeah. So, no, every time when you wake up, Okay, you find yourself uh, worrying. You feel that death yeah. can come any time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's a point where I could only be, be sitting alone. Yeah. I'm just answering a question on my own, then answering them on myself. Yeah. Because I was wondering, 18 years old, because at that time I was told that, if I can remember, I was around 15 years old. Eh? Yeah. Uh -huh. Then. You just say I'm left with only three years to live. Yeah. Then I'll be gone. It's, it is something that hurts a lot. Yeah. And then again, uh, another one I was told: uh, if I happen to live, I won't have children. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, I I'll not be able to, to impregnate a woman mm -hmm. and uh, and make her give uh, birth to a child. Yeah. Okay. I can say that one I've not uh, uh, confirmed because I, I don't But you, you are about to confirm huh? <laughs> one day. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I cannot say because everything goes by plan. By and, the plans of God, and, yeah. Yeah, and God's plans everything, eh? Mm. So I, I, I can't tell. Uh, maybe okay. I will have or maybe I might not have. We hope you have. Uh, Michelle. Speaking about some of these things that people talk about, he has talked about uh, uh, the myth of dying at the age of 18. What is that one thing that you feel has scared you so far in what people say? Okay, I, I was, I've also told that myth. You know, about the it death. really scared me, it scared, really scared the hell out of me. Yeah. But so when I reached 18 and I even passed 18, I was like, ah, this thing, Indonesia is now, you yeah. see? And uh, before we continue, mm. this age of 18, yeah. uh, surpassing it or uh, talking about dying at the age of 18, when you get to that age of 18, what do you usually feel or what did you feel when you go to the age of 18? I really got excited because I felt like I really, really got excited. Like at the point that you were 18, yeah. did you feel like now I I'm about to die? Or, okay. <laughs> Because now when I was 18, I was like, ah, ah people will say that you will reach 18, you're going to die, you're going to do the world, the world. Yeah. I didn't do that. Okay. So I'm really thanking God that he was, he is, and he's, he's still on my side. Yeah. And uh, the, another another myth that I was told that I, I can't give birth. Okay, so because the same uh, the, the, of the the maybe the sickle cell pain, the sickle cell crisis. Yeah, I can't even carry a pregnancy, you know, to term yeah. and uh, give birth the natural way. Yeah. Uh, the crisis will get me to hit me to attack me. Yeah. So I should just maybe get married to someone who 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 has a wife already and kids already who, so that uh, maybe I can call those. Those first five kids, my kids, yeah. I should take the same place of a second wife. So I was like, no. Yeah. So I push on because I know that God has someone out there for me. Thank you. And I will wait until He comes yeah. and He sends Him to me. Yeah. So when before 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 that, I will still keep on creating awareness in sickle cell. Yeah. I will still keep on creating advocacy in sickle cell because I feel I feel like. We need to just come out. We really, we need to just show at least this government to do something in the yeah. health sector, in HIF to actually and like include us in the in their cover. Yeah. Yeah. That that one for starters will be so good that you can even go to having hospital when you are sick. Yeah. You use an an NHIF card. Yeah. And we'll be really pleased. Thank you so much. And uh, talking about uh, medication and uh, being hospitalized, 
Do you have any count or can you have counts on, uh, on yes. how many occasions have you been hospitalized so far? When I was a teenager, mm. I was hospitalized so many times. Yeah. Uh, some, uh, on some occasions my mom could, ma could manage yeah. me in the house when I was, uh, had a crisis, mm. but some were worse. Okay. That I was just had to be hospitalized. And the, the, the hospitalization takes even two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. So two weeks out of school, you have another week to recover, then the yeah. last week you go to school, maybe yeah. you finish it, you don't finish it, you still have crises. Yeah. So it, does, it, it doesn't make any sense. Okay. But uh, as a teenager, I used to have a lot of crises. Yeah, thank you so much. Because of the hormones changing. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you. On uh, the part of Seth, uh, how frequently uh, have you, or at what age were you frequently hospitalized? Uh, in terms of hospitalization, yeah. I can say it is numerous. Numerous occasions. Yeah. Because even last year yeah. itself, eh, I was hospitalized, if I can count, almost six times. Eh? Six times? Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, you find that being hospitalized, this uh, term as a result of an uh, unpredictable yeah. crisis, pain. Because you know, the crisis pain, you can't predict it. Yeah. It is something that comes uh, abruptly. Mm. It can come over the night when you're sleeping. It can come whether you're seated. Yeah, you know. So, I've been hospitalized at Nightingale. Yeah. Uh, almost four times last year. Mm. Then uh, one time I was also admitted at Jyoti Arrest, that is uh, Jeramogi of Nia Teaching Referral Hospital. Yeah. Then again, I also went to Nightingale again. Kondele. What is the longest time you oh, at one point uh, took in hospital? Okay, uh, I can remember very well. The longest time I took in hospital at uh, one time. Yeah. Uh, I've surpassed two months. Uh, two months. That is when I was having uh, an, an, an episode pain. Yeah. It's a pain that keep on recurring. Eh? Yeah. It's a pain that uh, whether you take a, a, a painkillers, you take what, yeah. you've been given that uh, ability to run through events, yeah. the pain does not subside at all. Yeah. You see. So uh, I, I think it's. M more than two months, I think. Uh, two then. months. Yeah. Think and, yeah. And by that time also, I was also being transfused. Okay. Like uh, last year, that is 2021. Yeah. I had uh, three transfusion occasions. Yeah. Yes. Because I remember at a point I fainted when I was coming to town. Yeah. Then when I was picked, I was brought to Nightingale. Mm. Then uh, I, I was taken to a lab. Okay. Lab technicians uh, told me that uh, my blood HB, but by that time, uh, dropped to two point something. Yeah. That was very critical. Mm. And then I also remember I, I the time also took a transfusion at JTRH yeah. and then again at Nightingale. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, Michelle. We all know that uh, interactions must be there for human beings or even for animals. We interact here and there. How has sickle cell affected your interaction to people and how has it affected inter uh, people's interactions to, towards you? In terms of having a boyfriend? Uh, not per se a boyfriend, but okay. that can also come in because yeah. uh, generally interaction, this is where we get uh, girlfriends, boyfriends. Yes how your friends interact to you with you or how you interact with them how has it affected you so far okay you know when i was growing up uh, i have a sister who we've left each other by eight years yeah. she's eight years older than me mm. so most of the times when my friends used to refuse to play with me i used, yeah. to, I used to go to them and try to play with them and or when i'm fuza you are my sister, sister. yeah they were chasing me because they were like, ah, to yeah. don't play with us. We, we, are, we are older than you. So, mm. so I, I used to get teased about it with also with, with those friends of mine. Yeah. And, and at, being this point, at this point that you were being chased, <laughs> yes. 
can you say it was because of uh, not having uh, that knowledge on uh, sickle cell or uh, enough awareness and not be created at that no, point or it, it, it didn't have uh, anything to do with that okay no, just you know the big girls wanted to play oh, with the big okay, girls you okay, know okay. the small no, but the it small affected girls. you it affected me but not that much okay but i really went to into this lo alone thing mm -hmm. in this being a, a loner and uh, my friends also when they used to tease me and they used to you know pick on me all the time yeah i used to just be like eh okay uh i used to love my own company okay so when it comes to boyfriend when you tell when you date a person and tell them that hey you did them even for six months so maybe one year yeah. he hasn't seen anything he hasn't seen any signs of crisis and stuff yeah. Because sickle cell, when it when, when you reach 18, it determines whether you the pain reduces or yeah. it increases. Increases, yeah. So mine, it reduced. Okay. Yes. So if I know that maybe even I can even go for three years without even ha having any pain. Yeah. Maybe just getting blood transfusions only. Mm. But uh, if I know that when you tell this man that hey, I'm a sickler. You know, when you now get enough courage to tell him because now he's been part of you, a part of you for of so you, many, yeah. for like for so long, mm -hmm. even a year. So you tell them and they're like, oh, what? Yeah. Say, say that again. So it's like yeah. when you inform it's them or you new. tell them, you scare them away. It's, yeah, it's new to them and they're like, they're like when, they go on, when they go talking to their friends, yeah. their fellow men, they're like, hey, wait, bro. Ebu acha acha na na yudem yudem mata for the next minute acha na na e so find out that uh, the the number of co phone calls that you're having in that relationships yeah. they reduce Reduce. so when you call them and be like hey when you when you WhatsApp they're like ah you know I've been busy yeah. so you be like ah busy really are you so are you uh, that yes. busy that you can't even call your girlfriend yeah. call your woman I mean are you serious. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll make it out to you. Um, I'm so busy right now. So at workplace, uh, you know, I just got gotten a promotion. Yeah. You know, things are tight. Things are so not working for me right now. I can't have a relationship right now. Yeah. So they try to tell you, and I was like, hey, more than uh, move the on. excuses. Yeah, move on. Okay, yeah. move on. Stop bugging me. Stop disturbing me. Yeah. So I felt like, ah, let me just be single for now yeah. until I get that right man who understands me, who will love me the way I'm supposed to be loved. Now, That's when I will get into a relationship. Uh, to <laughs> each and every person, because you mentioned that on a camera, this all beauty is a single. You need to take action. But before, just a quick one uh, to Seth here. Seth, what are some of the, just a quick uh, recap of uh, some of the, your interactions with the people. How has it affected your interaction or how has sickle cell affected your interaction? Okay. Uh, SCD, yeah. uh, uh, at least uh, I can say uh, affected my interaction with the people yeah. uh, in some ways. Mm. Because when I was growing up, yeah. you find that uh, uh, I was being uh, considered a, as a, a weak boy. A weak person. Yeah, a weak yeah, person. Yeah. So if I, most of the time, I could be bullied. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I remember one time there's a guy came and uh, knocked me on the head. I, 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 I don't know, Christ. Yeah. Yeah. But that time, uh, my, my head was shaved like here. At the top like of my it hair. was yeah. clear. Yes. <laughs> You feel that someone is knocking your head. Yeah. You feel like they, uh, no, they, uh, uh, that one is bullying. Uh, because you're weak. Yeah. Obviously you're weak. Mm -hmm. You can't fight back. Right? Yeah. So uh, I, I grew up to being a weak boy. Yeah. And uh, again, res uh, resilience. Eh? Yeah. Uh, here at the middle. Mm -hmm. Now, when I started uh, going to. Uh, when I joined high school, yeah. uh, 
at least uh, for that one term, I, I was mocked. Yeah. Yes, and I was bullied. Now, I get res resilient yeah. because I had a friends yeah. who were really understanding me, yet also I have a friends yeah. who could discriminate me. Okay. Yeah. What is that one thing that you feel uh, needs to be done in terms of treating a sickle cell? Or what is that one thing that w the moment it will be done you will be happy or you will be at ease? I'll be at ease, uh, number one. Yeah when the government will at least uh, take an action mm. and say that sickle cell patient assisted worries, yeah. their drug should be given for free. Yeah. Or, if not, let those drugs be given yeah. at a subsidized price. Yeah. You see? Because uh, I can say a drug like that Hydroxyurea, yeah. for instance. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, right now, if you go to a, a chemist or a pharmacist, yeah. you ask for a price of, of one tablet of uh, hydroxyurea. Yeah. Trust me, it has surpasses 100 bob. Yeah. And it is one that drug that we need to take almost every day. Yeah. Because it is uh, a drug that at least will manufacture the red blood cells yeah. and make them not sickle. Okay. You see, it is the one that will keep you away from those crises, yeah. from those episode crises. Mm. A drug like, uh, uh, let's talk of uh, folic acid. Folic acid is, is there yeah. to boost blood, you see, yeah. because it has an iron yeah. and zinc and whatever, you see. Yeah. So, drug like folic acid, Hydroxyurea, pen V, that one is for now uh, bacterial infections. Eh? Yeah. Because you know, as sickler, it is very easy for us to contract eh? and uh, some other diseases. Yes. Yeah. You see. So, pen V was brought there to at least prevent us from this and bacterial diseases. infections. Eh? Yeah. The, and then we also have a uh, paludrin. Paludrin now, uh, okay, it prevents us from uh, getting. Malaria attack. Yeah. You, you see? Because it, it kind of anti malaria drug. Yeah. yeah. So, so because uh, now malaria is rampant in western region, yeah. the other region, and coast province. Yeah. And these regions are the same regions where sickly disease are very rampant. Eh? Yeah. So, I'll be very happy yeah. if government both national yeah. and uh, county government, mm. if they will take an action and give us our draft for free, because yeah. why not? Uh, if a patient who are living with HIV disease, yeah. they are getting their ARVs for free. drugs for free, yeah. what about us? What, what the difference? There need to be inclusivity. Thank you so much. Uh, that is uh, Seth. Uh, Michelle, just a quick one, or, uh, like 30 seconds or so, uh, to give us your wish uh, to, or what you wish to see in terms of uh, treatment of sickle cell. Okay, what I would love to see is that uh, emergency centers yeah. are built yeah. in public hospitals for us so that, we, and then the doctors also should be equipped yeah. with training so that they can know when we are taken in for, for an emergency, should know what to do. Yeah. Yeah? And then uh, I would also love for NHIF to include us in the cover. Yeah. They're not in the cover. They're not okay. in the cover. Yeah. And when this happens, now I will start to see sequence of at least Kenya, I mean, Kenya, the Kenyan government, county, the national government, I'm a, the county government now starting to take action because the issue start with NHIF. Yeah, okay. You should also be open uh, because you find out that when you go to the public hospital, sometimes uh, the treatment the treatment that you're given is not adequate. Yeah. So you left you're left there to the crisis. Okay. You're only given paracetamol, and that is not right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Michelle. 
I would wish and I would like yeah. that uh, employers, those yeah. who are employing people, mm. at least for us six uh, warriors, eh? yeah. or even the government itself, yeah. if we can be at least be, be given job placement eh? yeah. without any uh, discriminations or, or any uh, things of uh, sort that can at least give you that uh, 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 impression that yeah. you are no longer needed in the, society. in the society. You see, because even us, right now you cannot, uh, uh, okay, you may see me that I cannot. Okay. But if, if you try me with something, yeah. trust me, I will deliver and do it perfectly. Okay. Whom you think will do it? Thank you so much, Michelle. Do you have any parting shot uh, for the show? Okay, I just wanted to say a big thank you to my mom, yeah. my sisters Lois, uh, Joy, yeah. Alvin, my brother, and also to this great friend of mine, Peter Ritchie from uh, Ghana, who just yeah. came and uh, shot my short film Genotype for free. Yeah. To support me and also to support the the cause of me creating awareness, yeah. I just want to say thank you so much because he didn't discriminate. Okay. He was very friendly. He was very accommodating, and I want to really say thank you to him. And thank you so much. Tarichi, thank you. And uh, for those kind of heroes and uh, heroines, we celebrate you guys because uh, we have uh, or these uh, people live with us and uh, they go through a lot. The moment you come out. Uh, to help them, uh, we feel uh, good or uh, they also feel appreciated. Uh, that has been our time and uh, as you've heard, I'm going back to the part of, uh, because uh, Seth has not told us if he's single or not, but on the part of um, Michelle, if he's not careful or if she's not careful or if you as our viewer is not ready to do it, I'll take action. Uh, yeah, I'll take action and uh, uh, anyway, it's okay. Uh, until we meet again, uh, my name is uh, Captain Adede Junior Evans Adede, and uh, this has been the segment of uh, where we've talked about sickle cell. Uh, the moment you see these people out there, we feel uh, or let them uh, feel uh, loved. Uh, you know how to treat them, uh, treat them well, and make sure uh, they feel loved wherever uh, they are. My name is uh, Captain Adede Junior, and uh, this has been our episode.